Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. So today I've thrown together a really simple little um, video idea and it's nothing kinky. So I apologize for the weird name. Um, and if you were hoping that it was something kinky, I apologize for that too. After spending far too much money in July on fragrance, it's kind of forced me to evaluate my collection and really figure out, you know, what's going on with it. My tastes seem to have shifted slightly. There's a few little changes here and there. I thought I'd condense it down into a little fun tag video. The three-way element to this is nothing kinky whatsoever. I noticed that I just happen to have three fragrances that I'm currently selling, three fragrances that happen to be on my wish list, and I've got three fragrances that I happen to be enjoying an awful lot at the moment. I wasn't sure what to call this video, and when three-way pops into my brain, not that that normally pops into my brain, I figured it might be just a nice, easy little tag video. It's quite specific, not everyone has got three of everything, but this tag is wide open for anyone that wants to do it. Change it to four if you want, although four-way doesn't sound quite as fun as three-way. Or maybe it does if you're that kind of person. So let's start off with the three fragrances I'm currently enjoying and these are ones I already have in my collection. So they're three that I have and I own and I'm really really enjoying at the moment. Um, first one actually is from Mars Milano. Now I have actually got three now. This is my third fragrance from Mars Milano and when I first tried all the fragrances this wasn't one that actually spoke to me. Um, I thought it was very pleasant but it wasn't my favourite. It was very simple, very soft, very gentle, very um, Kind of forgettable really and when i bought my second fragrance from the company perfume playground here in the uk they very kindly sent me a 10 ml decant of this fragrance and i just breezed through that 10 ml it's classed as a soft yellow floral powdery yellow floral and it's also somewhat aquatic as well um not my style if i'm honest and yet despite that i just completely breezed through this 10 ml and i found myself longing for it and I decided to go crazy and buy the very very large bottle. The larger bottles are limited edition um, but I didn't th focus on that too much I just focused on the fact that I was getting the larger bottle it just worked out better for me. This is how it came. I was expecting it to just be in the usual cylinder tube packaging like the others and when it arrived in this huge box, huge enormous brick, um, I was a little bit like oh well, we can't hear it. Um, and it really is exquisitely packaged. We have this kind of, um, I think it's false, I hope it's false leather. I don't want it to be real leather. It is uh, it is nonetheless, it's um, a leather packaging and it's got this beautiful foam, let me hold it up a little bit more, this kind of foam bed that this, this bottle sits in. And it's all very fancy. And I suppose it should be for a limited edition. I just wasn't expecting it. I didn't really read into the limited edition aspect of things. So here we have the 100 ml bottle of Dolce Aqua. So Dolce Aqua is one of three in their newer collection called the Le Don de Masque collection. It's a, it's a collection of three fragrances that are designed and dedicated to um, iconic women. It feels like an optical illusion that there's actually 100 mils in there, but it is incredibly heavy. You also get your number, your limited edition number, in the crook of the neck there, and you have the usual you know, design. So despite how fancy this actually is, it doesn't stop me from reaching for it quite often. I'm not gonna wait around and use it on special occasions. This is a scent that I wanna reach for quite often and enjoy. So like I say, it's a powdery yellow floral. It's not my usual sort of style. It's not overly sweet. There's notes of Lily of the Valley. You've got sea notes, ivy, mimosa, ylang ylang, almond blossom, white rose, musk, saffron, oak moss, cedar, benzoin. There's more than that. When I first smelt this, I was expecting softer, more purple and light blue floral. Something about this makes me think of pretty little light blue, lilac -y soft blossoms like that it just smells it smells light blue and powdery and soft that's how it is to me c notes you've got lily of the valley and ivy that bring in this slightly well this sort of salty green breeze and i think that is where i'm picking up on this sort of blue scent this is basically like warm florals carried on a soft warm breeze and it's absolutely beautiful it's so soft the almond blossom does almond blossom smell like almond? I'm guessing it does, I don't know, but I'm definitely picking up on this almond. It's the softest possible almond you can possibly smell. Like lipsticky nuance as well. It's just beautiful, this one. So easy to wear, so angelic and calming and clean. Feminine and pretty and timeless. So that is Dolce Aqua, and that is the first fragrance of my three, of one that I am really enjoying at the moment and can't stop wearing. So that is that one.
So the next two are two that are somewhat a step away from what I normally enjoy because they both have quite a noticeable patchouli and that really is not my favourite. However, for whatever reason, that's just working for me at the moment. Uh, the first one is one I mentioned on my autumn video and it's absolutely beautiful. It's by the House of Van Cleef and Arpels and that is Rose Rouge. This to me is, if it wasn't for that patchouli, this would be the perfect rose fragrance for me. The rose in here smells red but it's sweet. Raspberry brings this kind of sweet, almost deep pink tinge to the red rose. It's classed as a sweet fruity rose. There's notes of black currant raspberry. You've got cacao apparently. There is rose, vanilla, patchouli, and you've got vetiver in both the mid and the base. That overdose of vetiver melds with the patchouli, stopping it from being too sharp or too dirty. It doesn't overwhelm this fragrance, but it does balance it. But because the rose and the fruits in here are so perfect, in my eyes, so perfect, it just works quite elegant. Um, and it smells very expensive. This is a very good fragrance for the money. It's really good quality, luxurious, stunning red rose fragrance. And even if you're sensitive to patchouli like I am, give it a go if you can. I'm not sure how available these are actually, thinking about it. I got this last year. As far as I know, they're still around. Such a beautiful one from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. Rose Rouge. There you go. So number three is from the house of BDK. And it's a fragrance I did mention very briefly on my pink scented fragrance video. And I didn't speak very highly of it. And I said it wasn't really worth the money. And it's, it smells like a typical fratchouli from a designer range. Nothing special. Despite all that, I'm feeling sheepish right now. I just kept going back to my sample and wanting to wear it. I don't know why. So from BDK, this is Passe Soir. Uh, I don't know what to say. I still stick by what I said in the fact that it is um, uninspiring. I think this, this fragrance almost represents a point in my fragrance journey where rationale is just out of the window. Anyway, I've got it. I'm enjoying it. That's what counts. So Passe Soir, your, your kind of fruity patchouli. It's quite sweet. It's actually very sweet. Um, I like that the fruits are not your typical fruits. You've got this more zesty, bright ginger. I do actually like ginger in fragrance. It brings that fresh, bubbly burst of something, something fizzy. But it is wrapped up quite nicely with the other notes. You've also got quince in here. I can't tell exactly what that smells like. I've had quince jelly with um, like a Sunday dinner and it's got a slightly tart taste, I suppose. It's a berry that's slightly tart, but still sweet. So that's a different kind of a fruit. Patchouli, cashmere in, you've got orange blossom and jasmine, so there are some florals in here. For whatever reason, the arrangement of notes, the, the playful nature this actually has, the light fizziness coming from that ginger, whatever it is, it's just a patchouli done in a way where I can tolerate it and and I'm really really enjoying it. It's got a sort of somewhat flirty nature. As it dries down it's more of a powdery fragrance. I think that's where I am I get more comfortable with it even more. I think it's just it's more palatable in a way despite the notes I don't normally get along with. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's fun, it's flirty, it's playful, it's sweet, enjoyable and it's sort of a good mood kind of fragrance. And I think it's good for any yeah, any weather, any any temperatures, any season, actually. Very wearable. Pesce Soir from BDK. So that's three that I am currently enjoying that I have in my collection. Next, we will talk about the three that I'm getting rid of. So I've got three here that I am, in fact, selling. The first one is by Mansera, and it is called Roses and Chocolate. Now, I had this. This is one of the first fragrances, first Manseras I actually ever bought. I've had it for about two years now. I've always called it a kind of fun... Um, novelty sort of a scent if I'm honest it's not one that I ever really reached for particularly often or really at all occasionally around Valentine's because it's called Roses and Chocolate um, it has a sort of fun vibe I suppose but it's very weird a weird f bubbly rose washing up liquid with a strange powdery synthetic milk chocolate very powdery strange combination once sent this to three friends where we did a sniff off and basically you just send them a blind fragrance and they just try and guess what is in it what it is it's quite fun and when i sent them roses and chocolate not one of them liked it they all came out with notes that wouldn't be in this like galbanum and other green weird notes 
And it just goes to show how weird this fragrance is. It's always been a bit of a novelty, but at the moment I am trying to be sensible. I'm trying to just keep the things that I know I love and I'm gonna wear. And there's no point keeping something that's never gonna get worn. Um, despite the massive amount gone, most of that is just samples that I've sent to people. So I don't think this is one that I need to keep in my collection anymore because I'm just not going to wear it. It's a beautiful bottle, that's a really cool ombre. Um, but not a reason to keep it, obviously. So that is that. That is one, obviously, that's on the chopping block. The next fragrance I'm going to be parting ways with is one from the Maison Dior, um, Christian Dior line, or, or Privé Christian Dior, and it's Holy Peony. So this could be a surprise to many of you that watch my channel. I have quite a few in this line, and I do really enjoy them. Holy Peony is always one I thought I should have in my collection. It's made up of everything that I enjoy in a fragrance. Um, it's a soft, sweet floral fragrance that kind of smells pink which is definitely up my street um holy peony i just despite the dent and that like i say a lot of that has gone into decants as well um i've just stopped wearing it i don't the last few times i've worn it i haven't enjoyed it and i think there's something in here that's coming off slightly medicinal i don't know what it is it's a really pretty peony fragrance and there are so there is some fruits in here making it a bit sweeter and a little bit juicier and there are elements to this which I really like and do really suit me, but there's also elements which bother me. Um, it opens up beautiful, pink, peony, light, watery, delicate, pretty, and it goes for a phase of coming off, um, I don't know how to describe it, there's something in it that's slightly medicinal or slightly chemical powder, a chemical washing powder or something strange like that. Then it starts to go pretty again, and then I, then comes back that powder. It smells soapy. Um, it smells like shampoo. Sniffing it from the cap is making me think, what am I talking about? It's really pretty. It's right up my street. But I always do this. And every time I wear it again, I think, oh yeah, yeah, there's that strange quality that it's got. So I need to stick to my guns. And that is Holy Peony by Christian Dior. So the third fragrance I'm going to be saying goodbye to is from the House of Penhaligons and it is called The Favourite. I was enjoying this through spring. I got quite swept away with the florals, the violet, the iris. It's quite a nice, breezy, pleasant, um, spring-like floral fragrance. The bottle is stunning, as I'm sure you've seen on many people's um, channels and videos that have this fragrance. The bottle is just so pretty. So back in spring when I was actually enjoying this fragrance, what I got from this was this lovely fizzy, chalky, palmer violet and iris breeze of florals. So the floral, the violet florals, they always came off slightly fizzy, which was quite nice. I liked that it smelled kind of, you know, purple in its floral nature. Um, it's not like a, an English country garden with certain florals on the wind. Like that fizzy, sparkling quality in here I've realised it's this ambroxin. This is that, I mean, I knew there's ambroxin in this and I picked up on it, but I get it more. I'm so focused on it that when I, every time I wear this, all I can smell is this, this ambroxin. And it reminds me of laundry detergent or just clean sheets, laundry, but in a, as if you used a bit too much concentrate in your sheets and it's a little bit too much. It wasn't for the fact that I wasn't so focused on, like I say, this ambroxin chemical nature that I would still be enjoying it and loving it, but it's, I can't get past that now. It's like a, a really sour quality. You know those pick and mix sweets that you get that are really sour, make your lips pucker? Well, the, the edge of this scent with that ambroxin is like a sour sweet, makes your lips pucker a little bit. And I didn't notice it so much in the beginning, but I do now, and I dust that. I'm afraid that's written this one off for me. It's unfortunate, but it, it means I don't need to hang on to something that obviously I'm, I'm not gonna enjoy. So that is Penhaligon's The Favourite. So that's the third fragrance that I am going to be decluttering. So next up is three that I have on my wish list and their first two are from the house of Golan. Now, there's wind of Golan doing a little bit of a change with their Le Art de Matière, or let's just say their Art and Materials line. It's a very exclusive, beautiful, luxurious line at Golan. And it's a line that they are Rebottling and relaunching. Now, apparently, this information was leaked on Instagram ahead of time. Luckily, a few individuals on Instagram um, screenshot the pictures and got the information and have been able to, you know, 
allow us to see it, which is fantastic. Um, Claire from Smurfy Girly, and also Sebastian from Smelling Great. I forgot the name of his channel. Sm Smelling Great Fragrances. Smelling. They've both recently produced a video explaining as much as they can about this new relaunch and new release which was really helpful so thank you both a lot of the fragrances that in that line were looking like they were going to be discontinued um but it looks like they're not going to be they're going to be rebottled new prices which is you know always the way with a few new perfumes that are going to be launched with it now one of them has my attention and it looks like it's going to be very closely related to a fragrance called french kiss and I've always wondered about it. It's a lovely violety iris rose lipstick kind of a scent. I've always wanted a lipstick fragrance, but so far I've not found one that actually does it for me. The French Kiss I kept coming back to, and then I thought, no, it's not going to be for me. And then I couldn't find anyone selling a sample. So I never ended up buying it, and now it's been discontinued. However, there's a new fragrance in this new line called Rose Cherie. And from what I understand, and from what also Claire has pointed out, the note listing for this Rose Cherie is very similar to French Kiss. Now, I'm not big on iris, and I think French Kiss had that sort of baby powder iris quality, which is the part that I was never sure if I would like. Now, this new one doesn't have that. There are notes of almond, damask rose water, and damask rose absolute, rose centifolia absolute, raspberry and violet. All those notes together sound absolutely exquisite. And I've got this feeling that this is gonna be the one for me. This sounds amazing, so pretty, so beautiful. Possibly the perfect rose violet, which I've always wanted. We'll have to see how that one goes. That is Rose Cherie from the secret upcoming launch from Galan. Second fragrance is also from the Art and Materials collection. And this is Tonka Imperial. I've always wanted that one, it's the most pure beautifully represented tonka bean fragrance it was classed as a spicy incense tonka the perfectly soft almost play-doughy with a hint of spice tonka bean um and because of the price and because of the performance and because of the simplicity of the scent i decided a while back that this wasn't worth the money and i just kind of ignored it really i have got a very small decant of it i mean there's just a drop left now and i i wore it the other day it's the quality when you when you sort of leave something for a while and you come back to it it gives you a better idea of how you really feel about it and the quality came flooding back from this beautiful tonka bean um, I just thought, oh, you know what? I, I would really love this, you know? My husband noticed it on me and said, wow, that smells really, really good. He asked me if he could spray it on him and I said, absolutely not. I've got like a drip left. I went online and it's been, it's sold out. It's basically sold out. Now, I know this is one they're gonna be repackaging. I'm really hoping they're not gonna re reformulate it because it is kind of perfect and beautiful. Other than the performance could do with a little bit of tweaking. We'll have to see, but I that is one on my wish list that I would love to have. So I'm gonna keep my eye out once again for this new release of the Art and Materials collection from Golan. And hopefully I will have Tonka Imperial one day. It's the last fragrance on my wish list. And there are really genuinely only three. So it's the newest fragrance from the house of Papillon Artisan Perfumes and it is called Spell 125. Now I did order a sample from the fabulous Liz Moore, who is the genius behind the brand of Papillon Artisan Perfumes. So this fragrance was launched on the 7th of July, the seventh month. And it represents the seventh year of her perfumery and the seventh fragrance addition to her fragrance collection. Now, aside from the significance of the number seven, the story of spell 125 is that of the ancient or the most ancient spell in the Book of the Dead. So spell 125 is the most ancient spell from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So this is her olfactory interpretation of that story. So you can see all the notes that are listed here. And the most significant note for me, this is the one that really does take the centre stage, is the green sacra frankincense. So frankincense is definitely celebrated in this scent and she also included little pieces of frankincense along in the packaging. I don't know what sort of they are, but just little nuggets of frankincense. So that was kind of a nice touch there. So I was highly anticipating this fragrance. The moment I heard Liz Moore talking about it, and when I heard a few um, influencers on YouTube also talking about it, the idea of this ethereal, almost silvery quality nature of frankincense and ambergris just sounded magical, absolutely beautiful. Frankincense isn't a note that I normally 
get on board with. I find it quite challenging. I don't tend to burn frankincense um, incense in the home. I find it too deep and green, um, slightly bitter, too strong, too spicy. So I was never quite sure, you know, how this one was going to be for me. The frankincense does remain quite bold on me. It, it smells green. It's a very green fragrance. It's quite bitter. It's quite earthy. There's some sharpness from that pine. I also get quite a lot of mustiness, you know, that musty feeling from those sort of, like an incense kind of mustiness. Um, I don't really enjoy the opening, if I'm honest. It's too much for me. However, this blurs, it softens. And after about half an hour, I start to really enjoy the experience and journey of Spell 125. That white ambergris in here is absolutely stunning I mean it's so natural and raw and magical ambergris I describe weird I say it's like a mineral moon pebble there's a mineral saltiness but this plump sickly silvery feel which is what ambergris is to me so where that ethereal moon silvery quality comes in meets with this green very natural, um, this mysterious forest-like scent, this, the pine, the frankincense, the black hemlock, this deep green, earthy, spicy, mystical side meets this beautiful white ambergris and it, they both sort of flood each other and it becomes this deep, magical, moonlit forest quality somehow that is just so addictive and spell, I mean, literally spellbinding if you were going on a wintry walk through the forest and you wanted to really capture that that magical feeling, this is the fragrance to do that. This fragrance will take you right there. It's enchanting, it's deep, it's powerful, it's rich, it's beautiful. It's not my usual sort of fragrance, but the journey, the quality, the story in this fragrance is why I would love it in my collection. I want to enjoy it in the winter. I want to experience it in the winter, walking through a forest, walking through the woodlands, just just enjoy it in that time. So Spell 125, that is the third fragrance on my wish list. Absolutely beautiful one from Liz Moores at Papillon Art Saint Perfumes. And that is the last one. I've no idea why I thought this video was going to be short. I am incapable of not waffling. So I'm hoping my waffling and rambling hasn't made this video into a chore. Um, I was hoping it would be a fun little tag. So just three fragrances you're enjoying, three fragrances that you are maybe decluttering, and three that are on your wish list. Would love to see everybody do it. Um, and that is it. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Take care, and I shall see you on my next one. Over and out.